Greetings. I want to give you a few remarks about um, inequality and the student loan student loan discussion. So usually I would do this way before, but things sort of gotten that things got in the way. So I'm sorry for the sorry for the the, the the delay. So one of the things I want you to realize from the student loan uh, article um, isn't necessarily you know, would canceling student loans be good policy or bad policy? What I wanted you to realize from the student loan article is that a lot of people have been calling for the cancellation of student loans in order to uh, address, you know, as a policy to address income inequality, maybe wealth inequality as well. And anybody who's thought two seconds about this issue and uh, the report out of whatever think tank that issued the report uh, seemed to put the numbers to it and confirm this. Um, you know, a vast majority of student loans are held by upper middle class and even upper class in, in individuals. So, um, you know, there, there's a definite correlation between what your income is and how many student loans that, that you have. And this makes a tremendous amount of sense because uh, supposedly you go to college to earn a higher income uh, in, 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 so, in some respects. So it's, it's not surprising that higher income people are the ones that are taking out, you know, that are, that are taking out more student loans. So, um, you know, a, a broad-based general cancellation of student loans, a limited cancellation of, 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 of student loans might be good policy. But if you are advocating for the cancellation of student loans, all student loans because you think that it is a sort of a partial solution uh, to income inequality then you need to rethink your you need to rethink your position so there's the you know I, I wanted you to think about this because I, I, I see this tendency among among people I almost want to add tendency today because but that's probably inaccurate people have probably always thought this way um, you know we we confabulate issues uh, that aren't confabulated. So, in other words, we will, you know, we have this false logic, uh, in other words. So we might say, well, I think socialism is bad. And this other thing over here is bad. So this other thing that I think is bad must be socialism. Okay, that's, that's not true. That's not true. So, you know, people do the same thing for capitalism, right? You know, well, capitalism is bad. Um, this other thing is bad. So this thing must be somehow associated with capitalism. That's, that's just absolutely not, not the case. All right, so um, canceling student loans may be a good idea, may be a bad idea. I don't, I don't really know, um, I have my opinion, but I don't really know that for sure. But what I, what I do know is that canceling student loans are not going to um, alleviate income inequality. So if you cancel student loans, you are going to be benefiting uh, people in the higher end of the income distribution in overwhelming, um, you know, in an overwhelming proportion of, 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 of that. So, and that kind of brings us to, you know, uh, inequality more more general. I, I enjoyed your comments on student loans. Um, you know, I certainly enjoyed your enjoyed your comments on, on inequality as as well. But with, with the inequality discussion, I want you to kind of recognize that a lot of people sort of confabulate two separate issues in the inequality debate um, as, as, as well. So wealth inequality and income inequality are two very, very different things. So, you know, obviously wealth and income are correlated all right, so this isn't really that bad of a logical error if, if, if people make it because, you know, wealth and income are obviously correlated because your income is somehow a flow into your stock of wealth. So, um, you know, if people think about these two things uh, in, the, in the same way and at the same time and think that they're equivalent, that's not, that's not really that bad. But still, you're going to, um, you know, you're, if you think about these two things the same way, you're going to be led down uh, a path that might, cause you to think incorrectly about what policies um, need, need, need to, you know, need, need, need to be enacted. And, and so, you know, wealth inequality is a really, really tricky thing to, to, to think about 
because your wealth is really, really correlated uh, with a lot of things that policy can't really address right now. So, um, for instance, wealth is really, really correlated with age, okay, in a very, very particular way. Your, your income is going to be correlated with age as well, but, but wealth is, is correlated um, with, with age as, as basically a matter, of, a matter of fact, a matter of construction, because as you grow older, you have more time to actually accumulate more uh, accumulate more more wealth so as society goes towards a transition of having more and more older people people that have had their entire lives to accumulate wealth it is just basically a mathematical reality that measured wealth inequality is going to go up just because of that and no policy really is needed it, it makes absolutely no sense to have policy to address that that phenomenon uh, another thing about wealth uh, inequality and the fact that wealth inequality is increasing is not surprising because when you go back you know, maybe even 50 years ago but certainly if you go back a hundred years ago almost no one had acquired any kind of wealth at all so you know if if this is 19 22, instead of 2022, you would have almost the entire population having having no real wealth uh, in the way that we would consider, um, you know, in, in the way that we would consider, we, we would consider wealth. So when you start from flat, okay, some people accumulate wealth, some people don't, you're going to see this um, increase in inequality and in wealth and it's, you know, again, that's just almost a statistical artifact. So when you're thinking about wealth inequality, you've got to think about, you have to think about these kinds of things. Now, for a little bit more, um, you know, a, a third thing that makes wealth, wealth different and would cause us to think about wealth inequality policy differently is the fact that our wealth is greatly um, influenced by our choices. So if you've got two people that are exactly the same, make the same income, have the same sort of life pattern, same number of marriages and kids and all kinds of stuff like that, um, those two people, depending on the choices that they make to save or not, could end their life with, with vastly different amounts amounts of wealth. So if you know you have two 18-year-old you know, twins or something like that, and, and they both take exactly the same path in life, and the only difference is, is that when one of them is 18, they start socking back, you know, 5% of their income or 10% of their income or some even really, really low amount of their income. And the other person saves all their, I mean, sorry, spends all their money. Then we know from the magic of compound interest, by the time those two individuals are like 70, one of them is going to be vastly wealthy, right? So if you start saving 5% of your income when you're 18, by the time you're 70, you're gonna have a tremendous amount of money. If you don't do that, then by the time you're 70, then you'll have zero if you haven't saved anything. So wealth accumulation can be greatly affected by, 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 our, by our choices. And so my, my question to people that would be concerned about wealth inequality is what, would, what policy would you, you know, what would you do about that? All right. What would you know? What what would you what would you what would you do about that? So th those are kind of just a few of the things that I wanted to add to the discussion to make you to make you think uh, about things. There's there's more, of course, but I don't want to ramble on for an hour. Um, I don't want to ramble on for, for 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 an hour with this because I think that it's um, you know I think your discussion was really really high quality and the material I ask you to read speaks speaks for itself. So uh, keep up with the with the discussions, you guys's efforts on this on this discussion stuff has just been staggering. Uh, a lot of you are responding to your classmates, which I don't require you to do, uh, but I think it's great uh, that you do. And, and I think that that's that, you know, the, the little bit of back and forth that you've had, I think it's been, has been really, 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 really useful. A lot of you are using your expertise, um, you know, so like if you work in healthcare and you've got comments to make about you know, healthcare issues like with the vaccine development stuff. A lot of you added your expertise to that discussion, and I really, really appreciate that as, as, as well. Because you know, this kind of program, the MBA program, MSFE program, and the you know the kind of programs that you're enrolled in are sort of 
you know, conducive to that because a lot of you have expertise outside of business, outside of economics that sort of intersect with business and economics. That's why you're here. And, and so if you can, if you can lend that to, uh, to the class, then I, I think that's, that's tremendous. So, so keep up with the good effort. I'm, I'm extremely, I'm extremely pleased and I'll, I'll talk to you soon.